Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar this afternoon for creating custom takeoff tools with Bluebeam Review. We are Zentech Consulting. We're a consulting firm providing innovative technology solutions to the Canadian AEC marketplace. Our focus is to improve efficiencies, which in turn increases productivity. I'm Steve Fahey, based in Halifax. I manage our Canadian operations. I welcome you to visit our website to learn more about our offerings. Also, don't forget to follow Zentech Consultants CA on LinkedIn to stay up to date on our upcoming webinars. I'm pleased to be joined today by Daniel Coppinger. Dan has an extensive background implementing and supporting technology in the construction management fields. He is noted writer in the Bluebeam community and has published multiple articles in trade journals. We're very happy to have Dan and his experience on our team. At this time, I will hand the presentation over to Dan to show you Bluebeam. All right, thank you, Steve. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, today for the webinar. I'm just gonna jump right in here. So hopefully everyone can see my screen. I had Bluebeam up. I can and, see uh, it. As Bluebeam, yeah, you can see it, Steve. Okay, great. Um, so as Bluebeam users, um, many of us are aware when we're creating markups that the markups are highly customizable, right? So you can see on my screen here, I have four different markups. I have this linear measurement poly length tool, right? I have an area measurement that's showing me the square footage. I have a, a volume tool that's giving me uh, cubic meters. I have this just basic circle that I'm going to create a count object with. But as you can see, anytime that we create markups in Bluebeam, we can go into our little properties tab here and we can make adjustments to the markups as we want to see, see them laid out on our plans, right? So with my 200 millimeter DIP pipe, you know, maybe I want to change the color. I can change it to green or blue, whatever I want. I can change the highlight, the opacity, the line width, right? And these are basic changes that we can make with our markups at any time within the properties bar. Um, same thing with my area measurement tool. As you can see, I've changed the subject and the label uh, for it to be interiors. This is an area of tool for an ugly green carpet, right? Um, as you can see, this is giving me the square footage, but I can also jump into our measurements tab and change the unit of measurement here. So maybe I don't want to see square footage. I'm dealing with metric, right? So I can change this just through this drop down here, the unit measurements, and I can make this square meters. And you can see how that immediately changes there. If I wanted to go back to my properties tab, I can show you know, what the actual markup presents to me. So right now it's just going me the, the showing me the square meters. I can change the caption to include my label, um, the, the length, the width, the height, whatever I want. This is totally customizable. And that's great. The problem we run into is that when we're making markups, when we're doing our layouts or takeoffs, if you create, you spend all this time creating a custom markup, you want to be able to reuse that. And so within Bluebeam, it actually has this great tool that you can use uh, called the tool chest, right? And this is this little tab right here. It's a little toolbox. If I pop it out with my Bluebeam here, you can see that I have tool chests and I, I created a custom tools chest that doesn't have anything in it right now. But it's very easy for you to just go into any markup that you create, it doesn't matter what kind of markup, and right click. And then down at the bottom here, you can add this to your tool chest. So I'm gonna add it to my custom tools. I'm gonna to go ahead and add every single one of these to my custom tools here. So just right click, add to tool chest, custom tools, my area tool, my volume tool, add to the tool chest, custom tools. And I'm gonna add this little circle markup that I that I created as well to my custom tools. And you can see that, you know, I have my subject and my label already pre-populated within the custom tools. Now, right here within custom tools, you can change these to various types of tools. Um, when we're dealing with any type of measurement tools, it's best to change this to a properties mode, right? And you can see what happens to my custom tools when I change it to a properties mode, right? You can see that the the icon now changes to the poly length measurement, right? And same thing with my, my green carpet here. If I change it to properties mode, it's now gonna change to a, an area measurement. 
same thing with the concrete properties mode there is a volume so it's showing me exactly uh, what kind of tool I'm dealing with when it is in the properties mode but you can still see I have my subject um, and my label for each thing all right so what I'm going to do is actually jump over to my floor plan and just lay some of these out here for you all right so I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here and then I'll take my plumbing line my 200 millimeter DIP I'm just gonna lay it out here you can actually so a line, and you can see how it comes in the way that I want to. Now this is the poly line, so I can continue to run pipe along the line. Maybe I want to go to this wall here, double click, and you can see how the pipe's showing me each segment. This is 14 meter run, this is a 25 meter run, and these are the same tools that I created, but I can use over and over again so long as I save them within my, my tool chest, right? So I have my ugly green carpet and I want it to lay that out in Susan O'Grady's office here. I can just drag that tool that I have already created, and it's giving me the exact same layout as I've created it before. Same thing with the concrete. Maybe I want a concrete pad over in the center of the building here, right? And it's giving me the exact cubic meters, everything that I need. And you can also see within the markups list, if I were to pop it out, it's giving me all the information that I need, right? I already have it pre-populated with the markups itself. So once I add them to the custom tools, everything's already there, right? I have my concrete as a subject. I have my 20 or 0.25 meter concrete pad, the depth, uh, the measurements, same thing with the interiors, the, the square meters for the ugly green carpet, my plumbing lines, everything that I need, right? And I can also create count objects within my custom tools as well. So you see how I have this little circle that I've created uh, within my markups here. And what I can do is actually just come in here and change the subject and the label. Uh, so I can say, hey, you know, this is, we wanna create a custom count tool for electrical outlets, right? So I'm gonna make my subject electrical and then go to my label. And I can't adjust that for now. Well, that's fine. Actually, I'm just going to change the subject here. I'm going to make this floor outlets. Because the first thing we need to do, because this is just a standard markup, and we have to, again, when we're dealing with a measurement tool, you want to right click and select it as a properties mode. When we're dealing with a count object, we want to create a count object here. So we'll right click on that. Right. And then it turns this basic markup now into a count object. So here, now I can change the subject and the label. Again, so I'll change the subject to electrical and the label to, we're gonna do basic floor outlets. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this one because I don't need it anymore, All right? And now I have this basic symbol. So what I can do, since it's created as a count object, well, now I can go ahead and go lay out all my floor outlets that I need underneath these computers here. So I'm just going ahead and clicking and I hit escape to end. And now you can see within my markups list here, I have my electrical line, floor outlets, and an eight count, right? And I can use this again at any point if I want to, right? I can just go ahead, right click on my, um, my count here. I can hit resume count, and then go ahead and continue to keep laying out. Right underneath these computers where I need floor outlets, hit escape and then there we go boom I have a 16 count of floor outlets right and everything is here saved within your tool chest which is saved within your profile so you can create your own profile within Bluebeam you can put in your own custom tools and save them for future use not only that but within the tools themselves we have the ability to create an endless amount of data that comes through when we lay them out on our floor plan and I'm gonna just show you for an example here, I'm gonna create a, I'm gonna switch profiles to our Zen Estimate Steel metric system that we recently created. I'll just go to the installation. And I'm gonna just create a new PDF here. Now you can see all these custom tools that we've created for our Zen Estimates metric steel I'm just gonna put a little layout here, run a little line, set a scale. 
now you can see it pre-populates with all of this data, right? We have our measurements, we have our size, a kilogram per meter, we have column heights, we have price per tonnage, estimated hours that calculates automatically for you with an hourly crew rate to give you a base cost, uh, total surface area, beam surface area, everything with that you need to actually do a full-blown estimate within Bluebeam itself. And you can output all this information via CSV and then just tie that directly into your estimate. So you can really get done 99% of your work just within Bluebeam itself, uh, just by utilizing custom tools and uh, custom columns, which we do for a lot of our clients here at Zentech. And it's, it's a really, really awesome system. And it just goes to show the power of, of Bluebeam itself. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much about it uh, with the custom trips and uh, tricks and tips that we have for you today. So I'm gonna send this back to Steve for any questions that you guys might have. Okay, so I do have one question for you, Dan. Can you make any changes to your tools after you have saved them? Yes, absolutely. So let me go ahead and just get the screen back for me here. We go show my screen okay and we'll go back to the profile that i initially had right so if we wanted to make changes to the custom tools that we've created so back on my floor plan here and i have my plumbing plumbing line and you know i'm just running it here really quickly if i were to lay out a markup right i could always click on this markup and change it right, change the color itself or the line width, whatever I need to do, but that's not gonna change the tool itself, right? The tool's still coming through as what I set it as. Well, changing the tool is just as easy as changing the markup. All you have to do is make sure that you highlight the tool and then within the properties tab, so long as the, uh, the tool is unlocked, you can see right here, you have the ability to lock the tool. So long as this is unlocked, if you highlight the tool itself, you can change the properties for the tool, right? So I wanna just change this, make this a, an orange color and then change the line width, maybe a little thicker, right? And now if I were to go to lay it out, boom, it's done, it's saved. And if you go to this properties icon within your tool chest and just hit save, now all your tools are saved. And this tool is now the orange markup that you need it to be and the size that you need it to be. But very good question. So it's it's very simple. It's just you know making sure that you highlight the tool itself and making sure that the tool is unlocked at that time. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much for that. I would just like to thank everybody for joining us. And uh, as mentioned, uh, please follow Zentech Consultant CA on LinkedIn. That's where we post all of the updates on our future webinars for Bluebeam and uh, any other products that we may be offering a similar uh, series on. And we're gonna be hosting Bluebeam webinars monthly for the next, I think another five months after today. So uh, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions and thank you very much for joining us today.